Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again with yet another video about a clock radio. Now as many longtime viewers of my channel will know, I have something of an interest in and a collection of various clock radios, alarm clocks, and assorted other timekeeping devices. Today I'm going to be talking about this Sony Dual Alarm Digital Clock Radio model number ICF-C770. Now at first glance, this unit doesn't have any particularly interesting or unique features other than the dual alarm functionality. In fact, Sony didn't even provide a display dimmer. Yet the design of this particular clock radio is certainly what someone could call unconventional. Unlike other clock radios, this one is flat. And at first I had a little bit of trouble visualizing who in the world would want a flat clock radio like this. As you can clearly see, it wouldn't be at all easy to read it from your bed or anywhere else unless you happen to be standing right on top of it. Of course, I quickly figured out when I flipped it over that it's quite possible to wall mount this unit using these two keyholes on the back. And that might be of interest to someone who runs, say, a hotel or a motel, as by mounting the unit to the wall, they could probably secure it to a certain extent against theft and vandalism. You'll also note that there is a pathway for the power cord to run down if the unit were to be wall mounted. There is also a very unique crystal clear plastic backup battery door. Yet I still couldn't figure out how the average person might use this clock radio in a more conventional installation. After all, not everyone is going to want to wall mount their clock radio in order to be able to use it. And I have to admit that what I'm about to show you took me a little while to figure out. Maybe you've already figured out how this unit can be utilized in a conventional tabletop or nightstand installation. If you have, don't spoil it for everybody else in the comments. Here's the secret. While the bottom half of this clock radio remains stationary and flat, including the frequency dial for the radio, the top half with the display and the speaker actually pivots. And that allows you to make use of the unit in a more conventional installation. It's definitely a very unique design. Now while the design is certainly somewhat unconventional, the control layout is pretty straightforward. What you're looking at here are the clock and alarm setting controls. You can see there's a button that allows the clock to be unlocked so that you can move the time forwards or backwards. When you move the time forwards on this particular model, the digits go by very quickly and it's very easy to overshoot the time that you had intended to set. Fortunately, Sony thought of this, and I'm sure this was done on purpose, when you press the minus button, the digits decrement more slowly. And then over here, we have the two buttons for alarm A and alarm B. When you press and hold these down, you can set the time in the same way as you would set the clock. The rest of the controls are pretty conventional as well. To the extreme left, there's a button that allows you to turn on the sleep timer, which can be set for up to an hour's worth of radio playback before the set automatically turns itself off. There is an on button to turn the radio on immediately, and then there is a combination off and alarm reset button. There are also two slide switches over here that govern operation of alarms A and B. Both alarm users can choose the kind of alarm they would like, be it either radio or buzzer. Interestingly, this set does not offer the option for a combination radio and buzzer alarm, although personally, that's an option I have a hard time seeing the point of. There is also what Sony sometimes calls, though in this case it's not labeled, a dream bar. A dream bar is nothing more than a snooze button. This one also has the curious legend that says, repeat alarm. I'm not sure what that means. I don't know if that means if in approximately nine minutes the alarm will be repeated or what that might be exactly. What I do know is that when you press and hold that button, as with some other types of clock radios, you will get a running minute and second counter as you may be able to see right now. It's kind of dim on the camera, so hopefully it will show up in the video. This runs out to nine minutes and then it wraps around and resets itself. Audio quality from the radio itself is not bad. This thing certainly is capable of producing enough volume to fill a moderately sized room. I'm sure it would wake even a fairly sound sleeper. It's not really great. It's not really it's bad. Roman, please violin, Samuel Sanders, piano. Well, 
let's have a quick look inside the unit. What you're looking at here is actually the circuit board that occupies the bottom portion of the case. This circuit board's functionality concerns itself mainly with power delivery via the transformer as well as the connections for the AC line cord and the radio functionality as well. There is a ribbon cable that links this board to the clock board so that the clock board can have power. It also allows the clock to control the radio and it provides a path for the amplified audio from the radio to the speaker which is mounted in the top portion of the case. Here you can see two contacts that connect to the backup battery bay. This is an interesting design. Instead of hard wiring this, Sony simply used a set of spring-loaded contacts that touch against the circuit board when this bottom cover is in place and the unit is normally assembled. This is the AM-FM band switch over here. There is the variable capacitor that allows the user to tune through both the AM and FM bands. This, of course, is the tuning wheel, and while you can't see it here, this operates not only the variable capacitor, but also the sliding pointer in the tuning dial scale by way of a gear train. And then, of course, you have the built-in AM rod-style antenna. Now, there is an FM antenna in this set. Some of you have probably noticed that white wire that was hanging around loose in some of the earlier portions of this video. That is actually the FM antenna. A lot of clock radio makers and designers opt to wrap that wire around the power cord, thus making the power cord into a crude, yet usually functional enough, FM antenna. Although Sony's approach results in an additional wire appearing outside the case and a wire that might be subject to mistaken or even accidental removal, it does allow the user of the clock radio more flexibility in positioning the antenna for the best radio performance. As when the antenna is built into the power cord, you might have to juggle the power cord around and depending upon where the radio is installed or how far away it is from the outlet, you may not be able to obtain good radio reception. Sony used an all-in-one integrated circuit to provide the radio functionality in this unit. This IC provides not only the AM and FM radio functionality, it also provides a small audio amplifier. However, the input for that audio amplifier is brought out via a pin on this integrated circuit. So if you were to cut a trace, install a switch, and install some sort of a mini jack, it would probably be possible to add a line level audio input to this unit. Then you could hook up a CD player, a tape player, a phonograph preamp, an iPad, an iPhone, or whatever kind of music player you would like, as long as it has a roughly line level audio output. There are definitely some curious aspects to this circuit board's design. In particular, you'll notice this daughter card, which is actually responsible for providing access to the off and alarm off, radio on, and sleep timer buttons. I find it interesting that Sony chose to employ a daughter card in the design, as this undoubtedly would have raised the cost of production, as well as the steps required during the assembly of the unit. Also interesting are some of the silkscreen notations on this circuit board. You will notice that right next to the volume control there is not only an arrow, but also a designation showing which way you would turn the volume wheel in order to obtain maximum volume. It's totally unclear to me as to why Sony would have done that unless perhaps it was to aid a repairman who was testing the set for functionality before putting it back together. You can also see a date code down here, that's the 4991. It tells us that this unit was made in the 49th week of 1991, meaning that this clock radio is probably either a late 1991 or 1992 model. Although Sony probably has the manual on their website available for download, I have not done so to check its copyright date and determine when this clock radio might have been marketed. However, despite its age, clearly it's more than 20 years old at this point, you can see that it's still working pretty well apart from some uneven brightness in the segments of the LED display that you saw earlier. And that's pretty much everything there is to say about this clock radio. Thank you for watching this video. If you have a comment, please feel free to leave one below.